Treating devastating disease can be full of risk, frustration, and heartbreak. Cures, even partial ones, don't just happen overnight. Sometimes it takes decades of getting a small victory here and there. And sometimes, you're born with the cure inside of you. This is the story of genetic immunity to a deadly virus. No, not that virus. And how it's helping to rid a selected few of the disease, one patient at a time. Human immunodeficiency virus, commonly called HIV, is a virus that infects and destroys immune cells. It's not like the viruses that cause the common cold or the flu where you get sick temporarily and then you recover. HIV causes lifelong illness. When enough cells are destroyed or weakened, the disease can progress to AIDS. Minor infections that healthy individuals fight off easily can be deadly for someone with AIDS. Anyone who was alive in the 80s and 90s remembers how scary it was when this new virus emerged before there was any kind of treatment and little was known about its spread. At the height of the epidemic in the mid-1990s, AIDS was the leading cause of death for Americans aged 25 to 44. All Americans. Thanks to advances in treatments, HIV isn't the death sentence it once was, but it's still a disease with no cure. What makes HIV so different from other viruses is that it's a retrovirus. Typically, our cells use DNA as a template to give information to RNA. RNA is then read by ribosomes, which make proteins. We use those proteins for everything from creating our hair texture to making sure our organs work properly. For a long time, we thought this was the only order it could go in. DNA to RNA to protein. That's even called the central dogma of molecular biology. But retroviruses go backwards. Their instructions are coded on RNA, and that RNA gets into our cells and gets transcribed to DNA. Then it gets inserted into our own genome. Scientists believe that bits of retroviruses have actually permanently altered human DNA like this over time. Once infected, it appears nearly impossible to rid the body of HIV. But about 10% of the European population has a mutation in a specific gene that makes them resistant, or even immune to getting infected to begin with. Wait, aren't mutations supposed to be bad things? Not always. In fact, most mutations don't do much of anything to an organism. You just hear about the big, bad, scary ones. In this case, the mutation is to the CCR5 gene, which makes a protein for the surface of white blood cells. This protein is a receptor, which is kind of like a lock, and HIV attaches to it like a key and gets inside the blood cells. But if you have the mutation, called Delta 32 for the 32 letters of DNA that are deleted, you don't make the CCR5 protein. It's like you've gotten rid of all the locks. So it doesn't matter how many keys your husband drives, he's never getting into your candy stash. What's more, people who have the mutation don't seem to suffer any negative side effects from it. In fact, scientists think that the mutation must have been selected for, evolutionarily. That is, those that had it survived to reproduce. HIV is too young to have been the disease to make this happen for an entire 10% of a specific population, though. So some theories are that it must have conferred an advantage in surviving some other, much older epidemic, like the bubonic plague or maybe smallpox. Researchers have actually taken advantage of this mutation and seemingly cured three patients of their HIV infection. But here's the catch. All three of these patients also had cancer. So certain forms of cancer, like leukemia and lymphoma, can be treated with a stem cell transplant. The idea is to kill off cancer cells and replace them with healthy cells from a donor. Stem cell transplants are grueling for the recipient and sometimes the donor. But, and this is key, if you're already getting one, why not add a little something extra. For these three patients, the bonus was that their donor was positive for CCR5 Delta 32. Presumably, these patients now have the Delta 32 mutation themselves, and after the transplant, they appear to be cured of their HIV. Though, it's more accurate to say in remission, as HIV is really good at hiding inactive and could come back one day. It's like the polyshore of viruses. Buddy. Sorry, polyshore. Great! Let's give everyone with HIV stem cell transplants. Well, it's not that easy. Not only are the procedures unpleasant at best, I've heard a bone marrow procedure compared to tapping a tree for syrup. It's really only done if it is your absolute best chance of survival. You can die from complications of the transplant itself, like graft-versus-host disease where the new cells start attacking the recipient's body, or because the PrEP left you with too few white blood cells to fight off infections. Also, there's the small detail that this doesn't always work. 
these three cases are the only times this technique has been successful in putting HIV into remission. And HIV doesn't always use the CCR5 receptor to enter cells. All things considered, it would be insanely risky to put patients and donors through this unless it had an incredibly high success rate. As I said, medical breakthroughs rarely happen overnight, and this particular approach may only ever help a lucky few. Lucky, unequivocally in air quotes here, because does getting one deadly disease to treat another really count as luck? Yeah, I didn't think so either. But the knowledge gained little by little could potentially, one day, lead to a treatment that puts people in remission for good. In the meantime, if you're one of the 10% with a Delta 32 mutation, take comfort in knowing you might very well survive the next coming of the bubonic plague. Thank you for joining me today. To go down an internet rabbit hole on HIV and its treatments, CCR5, or anything else we talked about today, check out the links below.